Hello, my name is Susan Pacopio, and today I'll be talking about the adaptive divergence of seasonal heart plasticity in pumpkin seed sunfish. In nature, various abiotic factors such as temperature, photo period, and dissolved oxygen content within lake and river systems change on a seasonal basis. We might ask, how do organisms cope with changing seasonal conditions? Narrowing in on temperature, the function of all organs is influenced by changes in this factor. However, effects on the heart are especially important because this organ regulates the transport of oxygen and metabolic products throughout the body. Some fish have evolved mechanisms to preserve heart function during temperature change by means of cardiac remodeling. This term describes reversible changes to the structural and functional properties of the heart and is a form of phenotypic plasticity. Cardiac remodeling is commonly assessed by observing changes in relative ventricular mass. The proposed underlying mechanism that's been thought to drive cardiac remodeling in fish is an inverse relationship between temperature and blood viscosity, which then influences the hemodynamic load on the heart. Using honey as an example, viscosity appears to be greater in the cylinder on the left, where temperature is lower, compared to the viscosity of honey in the cylinder on the right, where temperature is higher. Similar effects of temperature are thought to be imposed on blood, where cold temperatures lead to an increase in blood viscosity, and the heart now has to compensate for pumping thicker blood throughout the body. Additionally, research on rainbow trout suggests that temperature-induced cardiac remodeling might be sex-specific. Different responses between males and females have been attributed to differences in the levels of circulating hormones, such as testosterone and estrogen. Cardiac remodeling can also be investigated from an ultimate or evolutionary perspective. Modifications to the biomolecular and structural properties of the heart contribute to the maintenance of overall heart performance at varying temperatures, which is required for effective performance in ecological tasks, which might include predator evasion, mating, or perhaps foraging, all of which can influence fitness. This here models natural selection, and for evolution by natural selection to occur, the trait must vary among individuals and be heritable. Local adaptation now is a process where selection can drive the evolution of beneficial traits to match local conditions. I'm going to demonstrate this using an example. On the left, we have fish A, which resides in North America and is subject to environmental conditions that vary drastically across seasons. We might expect the heart to be an intermediate size in the spring and fall seasons, with heart size reducing in the summer when temperatures are warm and heart size increasing in the winter when temperatures are cold. Under these conditions, selection may favor the evolution of heart plasticity if it provides functional benefits by maintaining heart function across changing temperatures. Turning our attention to the right, fish B here resides in South America and is subject to environmental conditions that are relatively constant across seasons. Under these conditions, selection may favor against heart plasticity if heart plasticity is energetically costly. Therefore, fish residing under conditions of high seasonality may exhibit heart plasticity, whereas fish residing under conditions of low seasonality may lack heart plasticity. The main objectives of our project were to evaluate whether pumpkin seed sunfish undergo seasonal cardiac remodeling and whether this plastic response can evolve under contrasting seasonal regimes. We compared heart plasticity between three populations of pumpkin seed. For over a century, two of these populations have been subject to high seasonality while residing in Canada, to which pumpkin seed are native, and the third population has been subject to reduced seasonality while residing in Spain. The following graph to the left here displays mean monthly air temperature in degrees Celsius in both Canada and Spain. Canada has a high temperature amplitude of about 30 degrees Celsius compared to a low temperature amplitude of only 15 degrees Celsius in Spain. Pumpkin seed from these two temperature regimes were reared in a common garden environment in Ontario where any differences in heart plasticity we could then attribute to genetic differences.
On the ecophysiological front, we hypothesize that pumpkin seed undergo functional, sex-specific cardiac remodeling by altering relative ventricular mass to manage changes in hemodynamic stress that have been induced by seasonal temperature change. In this predictive graph, season is represented on the bottom x-axis, relative ventricular mass on the left y-axis, and sex on the right y-axis. This hypothesis predicted that winter fish will have a larger relative ventricular mass than summer fish, and that female fish will remodel to a lesser extent than male fish. On the evolutionary front, we hypothesize that under low amplitude temperature seasonality, natural selection will favor pumpkin seed that show less cardiac remodeling because they face reduced energetic costs. In this second predictive graph, season is also represented on the bottom x-axis and relative ventricular mass on the left y-axis, and now nationality on the right y-axis. This local adaptation hypothesis predicted that Spanish fish will demonstrate less seasonal variation in relative ventricular mass than Canadian fish. As briefly mentioned, two Canadian and one Spanish population were reared in ecologically similar ponds. We sampled fish from these ponds in each of the four seasons over the course of two years, and then brought them into the laboratory for a dissection. We began by removing whole hearts, and the ventricle was separated from the bulbous arteriosus and atrium by trimming. We then blotted and weighed the ventricles and processed a total of 297 fish hearts. To determine the sexes of these fish samples, we examined a tissue sample from the gonad that was squished between two glass slides. The presence of circular round oocytes shown in the left image here indicated female sex, and the presence of elongated spermatocytes shown in the right image here indicated male sex. As for our results, this graph demonstrates the relationship between size-adjusted log 10 transformed ventricular mass on the left y-axis, population on the right y-axis, where the upper two horizontal panels represent Canadian populations, and the bottom horizontal panel represents the Spanish population. Season is represented on the lower x-axis and sex on the upper x-axis. The blue horizontal lines represent mean ventricular mass, and the blue shaded region represents 95% confidence intervals. So the results of a general linear model we ran revealed a significant population by sex by season triple interaction effect on ventricular mass. And the lettering hovering the data points represent Tukey's HSD postdoc multiple comparison results, which are meant to be compared within the individual panels. So significant seasonal variation in relative ventricular mass, in other words, cardiac remodeling, was apparent in both Canadian populations and absent in the Spanish population, just as we predicted. However, our prediction about sex-specific cardiac remodeling was not supported because sex differences were only observed between males and females from Otonabee River, and this was likely only due to low sample sizes we had in males from Otonabee River. Within the groups that demonstrated cardiac remodeling, here shown in yellow, summer hearts were significantly smaller than either winter or fall hearts, as you can see by the lettering. To put these results into biological context, we quantified the extent of cardiac remodeling by comparing the mean size of non-summer hearts with the mean size of summer hearts. Non-summer hearts were 43% larger in Otonabee River females, 41% larger in Rice Lake females, and 65% larger in Rice Lake males than their respective summer heart counterparts. So in terms of the significance of these results, these findings contribute to limited demonstrations of cardiac remodeling in fish reared in non-laboratory conditions. The 41 to 65% growth in ventricular mass that we report here is greater than the 10 to 50% effect sizes obtained in laboratory studies of thermal acclimation, and this is potentially due to the natural conditions in which our experiment was run. This suggests that laboratory studies might limit the extent to which cardiac remodeling is demonstrated. Our results did not support that cardiac remodeling occurs exclusively in males, as we see in rainbow trout, 
so sex differences in cardiac remodeling might vary interspecifically. Furthermore, these findings demonstrate that heart plasticity can evolve under contrasting seasonal regimes on a contemporary time scale, considering that this process occurred in 50 generations. These findings also raise questions about the potential effects of global climate change on the evolution of heart plasticity in fish. Climate models currently project reduced seasonal amplitudes, which based on our findings suggests that fish may evolve less heart plasticity over time. Future studies might consider elucidating whether temperature is the primary factor driving cardiac remodeling or if other factors that vary on a seasonal basis, such as photo period, are also contributing factors. Thank you to my advisors, Dr. Frederick Leberge and Dr. Baron Robinson, and my mentor, Caleb Axelrod. An extension of my thanks goes to the field crew for their dedicated efforts collecting fish samples. Feel free to contact me at my email address listed on the right. And thank you for your time today.